Uh, hi. Uh, once again, I'm uh, Guru Harakere from Broadcom. Uh, <clears throat> my colleagues, uh, Kali Muthuvalapan and Babu Rajaram, uh, unfortunately, they were not able to make it here today. So I'm going to present this on their behalf. Uh, so today, uh, we're going to talk about Linux network stack a little bit, and then how we can optimize that even further for some of the applications. Right. So uh, on your screen, uh, you see a typical uh, network uh, you know, block diagram that's in Sonic today, right? So you have the ASIC, uh, and then you have the kernel driver, and the kernel, then we have the network stack. And on the, on the top, um, you have the socket layer, and finally you have the Sonic application, right? So when, um, when a packet enters uh, the switch, and especially the control plane packet, uh, it first uh, starts you know, at the bottom, number one, and then it gets uh, DMA to the kernel space and it get, the kernel driver interrupts, and the kernel does some work out of that, and then it passes on to the network stack. So within the network stack, uh, if it's TCP, IP, ICMP, it goes in one way, and if it's just a simple raw socket, uh, something that is not TCP, IP or something else, so it goes up uh, on the raw socket interface, right? And uh, for both, we have address families called AFNet uh, for TCP, IP, UDP, IP, and uh, applications like other L2, L3 applications could be just using AF packet to get the raw packet out. And, and this is a pretty decent architecture. And, and it's very, a Linux networking stack is very robust, right? So we also have other paths uh, to the path, uh, to the driver, for instance, is the same D through the octal path, but that's only for configuring the driver. So um, in general, when, when you are running this uh, Sonic on, um, on, on a box with eight cores, for instance, uh, under, under regular CPU load, you don't see any latencies, right? And typically, um, protocols like BGP, and then you know, they have fine-tuned uh, to accommodate some of these latencies that could happen in the Linux network stack. So they have timeouts in the order of seconds, right? But not, not all protocols are, in, uh, are working at that order of latency. They are work some, some protocols, for instance, BFD, right? It, it runs at milliseconds, and it needs, and it times out within 300 milliseconds, right? And if you run multiple of these sessions, uh, there are a lot of penalties that happen uh, that has to be, uh, you know, that it can inculcate when it runs in the network stack, right? So, so there is, given the network stack is pretty robust, but there is a tax to be paid, right? So what are the two taxes that every packet, uh, you know, going through the network stack pays, right? One is the packet copy uh, that happens from the kernel space to the user space, right? And this is a very costly operation because, <coughs> uh, uh, when, when, when you're copying something, you know, the, you, the process has to be woken up, the address has to be mapped, there can be page faults uh, so that the page is brought into the memory and then, and then the copy happens, right? So that's a very expensive operation. Second overhead is the queuing overheads within the network stack because it, it's so functionally rich, it, has to, it does so many things for us. But, uh, you know, the, the flip side of that is queuing overheads, checksum computations on TCP IP, uh, locking, et cetera, right? And all these things add up if you, you know, with increase in CPU load, or for instance, if there's a lot of control plane print traffic, right? And, and the latency sensitive packets, they start suffering because they, they time out and they create uh, false alarms. And that false alarms create multiple of, uh, you know, it cascades into multiple uh, reconciliation processes within the switch, causing even more CPU load. So how do we solve this problem, especially for, uh, uh, no latency sensitive application. So, so for that, we have you leveraged something called a Linux XDP framework. Uh, Linux XDP framework is actually, uh, it's been there in the <coughs> Linux kernel for, for quite some time, right? I think they have streamed it in 4.18. Um, and it's a pretty exhaustive framework. Again, I'm not going to go too detailed into XDP uh, here, but I'm going to touch upon a few things uh, so that we can understand how this works, and especially for the use cases that we are talking about, right? So XDP uh, is something is called expands to ex express data path. Uh, it, it uses two other core components. One is the Berkeley packet filter uh, infrastructure, and then it uses a, a new family called AFXDP, that socket to deliver uh, packets very fast to the application, right? So on the right, if you can see, um, <coughs> in essence, what XDP does is it gives you control uh, to look into the packet and take action based on a user-specified 
logic rather than you know kernel doing all things, right? So that is what is the filter. So you put a filter code, and you have you have <coughs> three different um, places where you can add the filter, right? One is the generic mode where it's just below the network stack. Uh, you get the packet can be intercepted and it can run uh, your filter code and then it can steer the packet, right? Even more performant is you, you trap at the driver level, right? And the driver, as soon as the packet is DMA, you can, you can look into the packet and steer the packet uh, whichever way you want. And, and the final one, that's the XDP offload mode, it's not very relevant to today, uh, at least uh, for regular Sonic, but this is something for uh, smart mix, right? Where the XDP itself can be over offloaded. So we'll not talk about the uh, XDP offload mode here. Um, and <clears throat> given this, right, so XDP uh, as a kernel framework, it also offers uh, many, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, hooks to, to put all these things. Secondly, it gives you, you can uh, put a filter per interface, and then it, it gives you a, a, set, a set of rich functions that you can inspect the packet and do some processing there. And also it ensures that your filter uh, cannot panic the kernel. So it's a very secure environment, right? So given this, so we, we can see that the filter addresses the first, second problem, that is avoiding the overheads, looking at a packet and sending up to the application directly, right? How does it do that? So the filter, what happens, so if on the right side in the box, you can see it's a filter code. This is something that you can inject at runtime uh, in, in the, in, from the user space into the kernel, right? And the, the code gets executed in the kernel at the point where you insert the filter. So a typical thing is here, as you can see, we are trying to filter out uh, IPv6 packets. And in the comment, we are just saying if you want to do something else, so you can, you can look at the packet a little deep, deeper and do other things, right? The key thing in XDP filter is the what, what return value you give it after processing the packet, right? So when you, if you return XDP pass to the framework, it sends it back to the kernel and then it goes from the network stack, right? If you say drop, it'll drop. Aborted, same as drop. TX, we don't worry about, that's on the TX direction, but we are only focused on, especially for the BFD use case, on the RX path, and XDP direct is one that we are interested. So when you redirect, you can steer the packet to another NIC port or to some of the application directly. So that's, that's the power of uh, the XD, uh, Berkeley packet filters, right? And there's a whole tool chain, how this, uh, you can code it like C code, and you can you know, uh, into, uh, run it, inject it at runtime from the BFD uh, into, into the kernel, right? And the second aspect is, how do we uh, save CPU cycles in the copy part? This is one of the most expensive part, especially for latency sensitive applications, right? Uh, so what, what it does is, uh, uh, XDP offers something called uh, a UMEM, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, basically uh, what UMEM is, that the applications, instead of allocates the buffer in the user space, and that is mapped directly into the kernel. That means a packet can come directly into that space, and the user, user uh, and you can avoid the kernel to user copy, and you can save one copy there. So that gives a tremendous amount of boost uh, to your latency uh, in improvements, right? And uh, the the whole so here I'm representing a ring. So this is your TX RX ring. Uh, this is a oversimplified diagram because there are multiple rings, TX RX, and there's a completion ring and a fill ring. Uh, I think uh, that it will be too detailed to go into that because it's quite sophisticated. Uh, suffice it to say that you are getting the packet directly into your memory. There's no copy there. So it solves both these problems, and then you have mm, uh, socket calls and poll and other things to get the notification, right? So <clears throat> how do applications integrate? We talked about it briefly. So you can either use the generic mode, uh, which means that you don't need any of the driver changes to happen, it's currently available in Linux. Any application start can start using that mode. Uh, but if you want more performance, then you can. You need to change the driver to enable it to be XDP aware, right? So, so let us look at BFD as a use case and how we have integrated BFD using the uh, XDP framework. Uh, again, we are back into the network stack. So the change that we have done is uh, the BFD application now inserts a XDP filter, right? So BFD application initializes, you will see the black arrows, that's where the initialization happens. Uh, it allocates the buffers, 
uh, it uh, builds the map. That's how it uh, tells how the filter has to redirect the packet, and that gets inserted uh, into the kernel, right? So uh, on the on the packet path, when it get to three, that's where the ASIC driver it it ins uh, uh, so the packet is sent to the Linux stack. The control goes to the filter. Now the control, based on that, it looks at whether it's a BFD packet. If it's BFD, it says XTP redirect, and it gives the XTP map, uh, redirect map, and it tells XTP framework to send it, uh, send it directly to the XTP socket uh, that is open. So to enable XTP, we also had to create an Ethernet interface, a virtual Ethernet interface, so that the applications can bind it to. Uh, other than that, uh, it was a pretty straightforward plumbing. Uh, and and uh, for all other packets, it just send it to XTP pass, and it uh, processes uh, through the regular processing. Right? So if we were to do the same thing, this is currently in production. Um, so the native mode is still a uh, work in progress. Uh, this is where we have to enhance the ASIC driver itself. Right? So the ASIC driver uh, has to become uh, XTP enabled. And uh, what we can do is there is we can also allocate a specific DMA channel for very latency sensitive applications so that we can only field interrupts and then pass it on to the uh, XTP framework from there. Uh, rest of the plumbing and, and the way the filter works is the same. It's just that uh, where the control goes to the filter has now come down to the driver level. Right. Uh, so uh, when applications uh, want to integrate using this, uh, what Broadcom has done is it has taken all these uh, details of how applications can use this uh, XTP uh, all, the, all the details about buffer management and created a library uh, so that applications can directly use the library rather than duplicating the code for every application, right? So uh, briefly, uh, what libxtp uh, does is, you know, it, it gives you the whole XTP framework uh, in, in, into simple APIs. Uh, it also uh, manages the attaching and detaching of filters when ports go up and down. Uh, uh, you know, it also passes on the source port from which this packet has come so that applications can use that. Um, then it also manages the bufferings. So that's the one of the important part. And uh, filter chaining is uh, in a slightly more advanced where you can have uh, cascade multiple filters, right? You can, uh, so that way you can, uh, you can look at uh, writing really sophisticated filters uh, and isolated, and you can just pass on, and then based on, based on that, you can actually take the decisions, right? And finally, we also uh, the, the library also collects some statistics uh, that could be used uh, by applications. So libxtp definitely you know, enables easy integration uh, for applications. So, so let us look at the performance now. So how, how, does it, how does it all come together, right? So what we did was um, uh, we, we took a switch, uh, took four ports, uh, we kept the CPU load a little moderate, and then we injected uh, packets, both in moderate and CPU, uh, high CPU uh, modes. And uh, the packet injection rate was about 20 k, uh, packets, 20K packets per second. And as you can see, if it's non-XTP, that is if XTP mode, packet mode, uh, we get about 20, 20K packets per second, but we see latencies. You know, we do see BFD flaps uh, in this case. But if you run it on uh, AFXTP, you get all the 20K packets without any latency. Right? Now, the, the second test, which is with high CPU load, that's where the problem is. Uh, we also uh, increase the packet injection rate to 300 kPPS, right? And, and you see that AF packet, basically, you know, BFD doesn't survive this, right? Uh, more than 50% is packet loss uh, or, or just it's dropped because it's irrelevant for BFD, right? It go, goes out of sync and, and the whole network sort of starts shaking, right? And, uh, but AFXTP, you get your 300k packets, right? So the performance uh, guarantees are, 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 are the proof of the pudding here. So, uh, so we have implemented this for both BFD and UDLD. Uh, finally, call for action. Uh, we would request all ASIC vendors to look at enabling this XTP mode so that our application, uh, other applications can utilize this for high performance paths. Uh, application developers can also relook at how they want to handle their packets. They don't really have to go to the network stack, right? Uh, community can evaluate other use cases beyond beyond uh, the low latency path uh, for BFT protocols or UDLT. Right? Uh, from Broadcom side, we'll be up, upstreaming the HRD for libxtp, 
and we will make it available to the community as soon as we can. With that, that comes to my end. Thank you.